Today we're talking about motor coaches, over the road rates, mileage, driver exchange, and a lot of other great stuff. Question coming from Eric Devlin from Premier Transportation in Dallas. Hey Bill, it's Eric Devlin, Premier Transportation, Dallas, Texas. As you know, in December of 2015, we added four new coaches to our fleet. I've got some questions about the pricing models that coach bus operators use for uh, their clients, uh, both for an in-town run and over the road. Talk to me about per hour versus mileage, and then also about the additional charges one can add to a, uh, an invoice uh, in the coach bus arena. Lastly, I'd like for you to comment, most importantly, on my socks. All right. Thanks, Bill. Have a good day. Eric, I don't know about your sock game. Um, that was looking a little bit weak to me, especially if you saw Doug Schwartz's socks when he had the, uh, the big boxer and that Michael Campbell called him out on at the LCT show last week. But I can't say anything because I'm not wearing socks today. I'm actually in shorts uh, with driving shoes on. We're going to use a fictitious trip today since I'm coming to you in uh, this beautiful Gretsch uh, GM45 from Signature Transportation here in Nashville, and it's really easy for me to use as an, as an example, is a trip from Nashville to Memphis. It is 213 miles from Nashville to Memphis, which means 426 miles round trip. And some of the factors that you need to consider when you're pricing this model with these over-the-road trips is one, based on the speed limit, how many hours is it going to take you round trip? In this case, it's probably going to be roughly right around 10 hours round trip, which means that your clients will have five hours of time once they're in Memphis, whether they're going to Graceland or a corporate meeting or whatever it is. That 10 hours of drive time plus five hours of time is going to max you out on your DOT 15 hours of work time for your driver. If you're going to go over that time, and let's say they're gonna spend seven or eight hours in Memphis, then you're probably gonna to have to factor in a driver exchange. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. But the real big decision is, is are you charging by the mile or are you gonna be charging a day rate? This is not a trip that I would recommend that you're charging hourly on. So Eric, here's some things to consider with this Nashville, Memphis, Memphis, Nashville day trip. If your motor coach day rate is $1,200, all in or plus gratuity for a day rate, and you're charging $350 a mile for over the road, when you multiply 426 miles round trip, plus three, multiply that times $350 per mile, you're looking at $1,491 if you can get that per mile rate. What we see, a pretty good average is about 465, or excuse me, 365 per mile for over the road. So in this scenario, you definitely would want to be charging on a mileage basis, even at 350 a mile, as opposed to a $1,200 day rate so you can maximize your revenue and your profit margin. Now, let's say that this is reverse and we're going from Memphis, or excuse me, from Nashville to Asheville, North Carolina. For those of you that don't understand the Smoky Mountains, Asheville, North Carolina is right in the middle of the Smokies. That means the motor coach is going to be climbing through the mountains as it's driving to Asheville. So one thing that you're going to want to factor in, and I know you're in Texas and it's pretty flat ground down there, but for those of you that are not, you are going to be burning more fuel when you're climbing through the mountains. So you may want to raise your rate either by 10 or 15 cents. So if you were charging 350 a mile, you might want to charge them 360, 365 a mile to offset that charge. Or what we see is a lot of motor coach companies are actually charging based on that mileage from the time they hit that mountain range to get in and get out. And they may raise their rate to four, even 425 as they're going through the mountains. Just had a great conversation with Tom Holden uh, from Rose Transportation in North Carolina and Charlotte about this last night. So at the end of the day, you can price to maximize your value for your motor coaches, but obviously the customer and the consumer is gonna dictate the end pricing. So Eric, the last thing I wanna to talk to you about today is gonna to be the driver exchange. And there's really no one way to be able to do this, but in many cases for limousine companies that are doing driver exchange is literally to send a sedan 
and a driver to trail the bus or to go down in advance and be able to meet them there. Always keep in mind the on-duty and driving hours based on DOT regulations. So in many cases, when I was in the motor coach business, we were sending a lot of trips down to Florida to Orlando to the Panhandle. Orlando is 10 hours drive time uh, from Nashville. So literally we would do a driver exchange typically around Birmingham. So we would trail the motor coach with a sedan with the second driver and we would exchange uh, in Birmingham about three to three and a half hours away from Nashville so we can keep both drivers inside of that DOT regulation. And we would charge a standard sedan rate to do that plus about a $200, sometimes $250 to $300 premium strictly for that exchange. So it may add five or $600 to that trip. In that case, we're also typically not charging per mile because we're probably going for three, four, five days, we're actually charging a day rate. So that's kind of how we handled our driver exchanges. And one instance for us that we kind of ran into some difficulty with that is we actually had a client that went on a 47 day uh, tour across the US into Canada, started in Florida, went up through New York, went into Canada, came back down into the States and actually ended in California. And that was literally a flat day rate plus an additional $300 per week gratuity for the driver on top of what we were paying for them. And they would spend $75 a day per diem plus hotel costs for that driver. So this is a lot of information. Actually, probably the most difficult question that I've had posed to me. Thank you very much, Eric. I think it's great information for everybody. And I would love all of you guys that are in the motor coach industry to put your thoughts down below, the Tom Holdens, the Barry Grosses, the Brian Whitakers, um, of, the, of our industry, the Matt Johnsons as well, you know, because this is a topic as we see a lot of limousine companies migrating and adding coaches to their business on how you're going to maximize your revenue. Awesome question, Eric. Thank you very much. We'll see you all soon on the Ask Limo You Show.